We're going to look at one very large group of fish. This is the category of cartilaginous fish. Um, so sharks, skates, rays, um, a group of fish called chimeras and ratfish are also a part of this. And um, these fish are made, um, excuse me, their skeletons are made entirely of cartilage. So they do not have bony skeletons. Um, this makes them very flexible and fast in the water. And it has some other advantages as well, which we're going to look at. Um, cartilaginous fish is broken into two subcategories. Um, the first group you probably haven't heard of. Um, this is a group that consists of chimeras and ratfish, which we will see uh, towards the end of this. Um, these are called holocephalans, is the term for those, chimeras and ratfish. And then the larger group that you're more familiar with are the elasmobranchs, so sharks, rays, and skates. And um, there's a whole subset of biology that studies specifically elasmobranch biology. So if you really like sharks, that might be something to go into. We're going to see that there's two body types represented in, the, in these categories, um, the elongated streamlined body type that we see with sharks, and then the flattened um, dorsoventrally, meaning they're flattened kind of like a pancake from top and bottom, and that's the skates and rays. So we'll start with sharks. Sharks, as you know, are kind of in the top predator category in the ocean. Um, they're very specialized for feeding. Um, some of them, however, are not the big, toothy, dangerous meat eaters that you would imagine. Some of them eat small planktonic organisms. Um, so these would be considered to be zooplanktivores. So they, they still eat meat technically. They eat zooplankton, which is animal plankton. Um, but they're not as fierce looking as sharks that you're used to seeing typically. Um, these guys would include the whale shark and the basking shark. Um, basking shark has this big, broad mouth. And they basically take in a ton of plankton and then um, sort of strain it out, just the same way a baleen whale might do. Um, sharks in general, though, all sharks, they can vary from 6 inches to 46 feet in length, depending on the species. So there are some that are very small and some that are enormous. Some basic anatomy, I'll let you look this over, but some key characteristics here. Um, you've got the pectoral fins, which are um, a type of paired fin that they use for um, steering and stability. You've got the dorsal fin, the first dorsal fin, and sometimes the second. So there's often two dorsal fins, um, or what's called a precaudal fin. Um, the term for the tail of a shark or a fish is caudal fin. So just a little bit of terminology. You're used to calling it a tail or a flipper, um, but its technical term is caudal fin. And um, some other important characteristics, they Sharks all have this little organ called a spiracle, and we're going to look more at that later, um, but that's something on this diagram that you might not recognize. Um, so sharks, their main form of movement is um, by basically pushing their caudal fin back and forth, and that type of movement is generated by very, very strong trunk muscles. So these are the muscles that run laterally, um, basically through the, bar the side of the body on both sides, and they basically push the tail back and forth really fast. Sharks are usually what are called um, heterosecral, meaning the dorsal upper lobe of the caudal fin is larger than the ventral bottom lobe. And the difference, how big that upper, upper fin is compared to the lower, can sometimes tell us things about that shark, about where it lives. Um, if it lives in really shallow water, then it might have a really large upper lobe and a really small lower lobe. Um, that lower lobe would get stuck in the sand if it's skirting about on the bottom. Um, sometimes that caudal fin might even have a little spine on it. Yes, as if sharks weren't scary enough. Um, the spiny dogfish actually has a spine on its caudal fin and on its dorsal fin. So some other images here of types of tails, um, excuse me, of caudal fins. See, even I do it. Um, their caudal fins can again be shaped just based on where they live and how much movement movement they do. The great white, for example, is a big open ocean swimmer, and so it has kind of a um, pretty symmetrical looking caudal fin. It's very large, both top and bottom lobe. Um, but some of these other sharks, like the zebra shark or threshers, you can tell that they live in shallow water because they have this tiny little lower lobe and this huge upper lobe. So some other things about their gender, um, males and females uh, are differentiated. They're, you can actually tell um, by looking at them if you're a shark expert. Um, breeding occurs inside the female, so they do mate um, directly. So the male will attach himself to the female and um, insert his sperm. The female will actually carry eggs inside of her for a period of time before laying them. 
And there are several different strategies with this. Now it's not quite the same as what mammals do because the babies are not um, attached to the female. There's no umbilical cord um, connecting her circulatory system to theirs. And that's a big difference between what sharks do and what mammals do. Um, and likewise, female sharks do not nurse their young. There's no lactation, there's no milk. And that's actually the key definition of a mammal is that it does that. So they are not mammals, they are truly sharks, um, but they do have what's called live birth um, in the sense that the female carries the eggs inside of her, they hatch, and then they're off on their own. Now their teeth. Sharks, as you know, have multiple rows of teeth, a lot of teeth, and they're almost like a little conveyor belt of teeth. Um, what happens is sharks are constantly making new teeth. So if they lose a tooth or several teeth, they got backups that are already coming out. And so um, the teeth are constantly replacing the broken or damaged ones. Some sharks will produce over 30,000 teeth in their lifetime, which is crazy. Um, the teeth have serrated edges, which makes them even more um, damaging if you get bitten by a shark. It really tears your skin, not just the, the sharp tooth itself, but the little um, serrated sides. Sharks um, do not chew their food at all. Um, they use those teeth to grasp and tear it. They thrash it back and forth and then they'll swallow chunks of food whole. So those teeth are exclusively for grabbing and shredding. As you can see, the teeth can be quite intimidating too. Um, sharks have an amazing sense of smell, which you've probably heard of, or if you've seen Finding Nemo, you've seen how sharks can detect blood really easily. Um, they can smell their prey in the water, sometimes from miles away, which is pretty amazing. So that's one big adaptive advantage that they have. The fastest shark in the world is the short fin mako. They say it can move up to 20 miles an hour. So some sharks can get pretty speedy in their ability to catch their prey. Um, sharks are found across the world in all oceans, mostly tropical waters. Um, there are some sharks you might find in cold waters, but not many. Um, more than half live in very shallow water. Now let's talk about humans and sharks. Sharks get a bad reputation. Um, sharks are killed for their fins, though, and they're also eaten. Um, there's an oil that they produce called squalene that's taken from them and used for human purposes. Um, their skin, leather, cartilage has purposes as well, and then also for sport. Apparently shark fin soup is quite tasty, and so the sharks have been hunted um, pretty badly for their fins, and the rest of their bodies are just thrown back into the ocean. So shark populations are in drastic, drastic decline for these, re for these reasons. Um, the amount of times that humans get killed by a shark is minuscule. I mean, very, very small number compared to how many sharks are killed by people. So um, attacks are rather infrequent and they only involve about 10% of all shark species. So most species of shark have never had a documented incident with a person. Um, and that includes um, the, the shark species that are involved with attacks typically include great whites, tiger sharks, bull sharks, hammerheads, mako, Galapagos and the white tip. Those are some of the big the doozies as far as attacks are concerned. Um, North America has the highest number of attacks annually, followed by Australia and South Africa. Approximately 100 attacks per year and only 10 to 15 of those are fatal. So um, again, if you look at those statistics and you look at how many people are out in the water, um, that's a really tiny number. Um, sharks are pretty much always there even when you don't know that they're there and so as scary as that might sound it actually makes this the statistic even more um, striking that there's so few shark attacks given how many times people are in the water with sharks so next we're going to look at the other class of elasma branch so this is skates and rays um, these guys again have flattened bodies but they're very similar to their shark cousins in other ways um, as you can see, they're, they're sort of broad and um, almost like a bat with wings, has these basically enlarged pectoral fins and very reduced and small caudal fin. Uh, like the shark, these guys have spiracles on the top of their heads. And what the spiracle does, I, know, I think I didn't bring that up earlier, um, the spiracle and on the, on the um, skate or ray would be right about here, um, it basically helps them to detect uh, subtle electrical currents in the water. So the spiracles are pretty useful um, for the uh, skate or the ray's ability to detect movement and detect um, the presence of prey in the water. So as you can see, these guys are really well adapted to living on the bottom. 
Um, some live out in open water. You, see, you think of the huge manta rays you see gliding through the ocean and eagle rays. Um, most live on the sandy bottom, though. And um, this is where there's been problems with people and rays. I know here in Tampa Bay, uh, there's lots of incidents every year of people getting stung by stingray barbs. Um, you probably heard that Steve Irwin was killed by a stingray barb. Steve Irwin was, was a very famous Australian um, naturalist, and he had a TV show called The Crocodile Hunter. And he was killed um, in 2006, I believe, by a stingray barb. So stingrays can be quite dangerous. Um, and here in Tampa Bay, we have a little expression called do the stingray shuffle, meaning when you're um, at the beach and you're walking in the water and in the sand to shuffle your feet rather than take steps. Um, because if you shuffle, then you might bump into the ray and it will just swim away. Whereas if you take a step, you run the risk of stepping on the ray and then you get hit with a barb. So fun little piece of safety advice for you if you're ever around um, rays. So anyway, um, uh, some other defense mechanisms. Um, you've got a few species that actually can deliver an electric current. Um, this isn't very common, but there are a few species that can de deliver almost... Um, about, what did I say here, 220 volts of shock, so a huge amount of electricity. That's pretty intense. Most of the time, though, the only thing you have to fear from a ray is the, um, the barb, the sting um, on the end of their tail, but that's, again, not all species even have that. So let's talk about the difference between skates and rays. We've mentioned skates, um, but let's take a quick look here. So um, a ray has a body very similar to that of a skate, skate, excuse me, um, rays swim by moving their pectoral fins up and down, so they almost like they're a bird flapping their wings. Um, they have a thin, brittle tail with a spine on the end, so their end of their tail is quite brittle and hard, and then the spine um, is not quite at the end, that's actually right about here. And um, what's interesting about um, rays is that they, act just like sharks, they give birth to live young. Um, so these guys will, I think my graph is actually a little funky here. Um, but anyway, these guys will um, have the eggs inside of them and then lay them. Um, so with rays, the largest is about 30 feet, so these guys can get pretty huge in size. Uh, now skates are a little bit different. They may look the same, but they do have some um, significant differences. These guys swim by actually generating little waves underneath their body that they kind of surf on. So they kind of glide through the water in a different manner than the rays. These guys have a fleshy tail, so they do not have a, a barb at the, on the um, base of the tail, and they do not have a, a brittle tail. They have a big fleshy tail. Um, skates will lay eggs in what's called a mermaid's purse, and I'll show you a picture of that. Uh, right here, this is a mermaid's purse. It's kind of a funky little pouch. So they'll lay their eggs in those um, as opposed to doing the live birth thing. And um, skates can be about 22 feet across, so these guys are a little bit smaller on average. Um, this is an actual um, stingray barb, so a barb that could get stuck in somebody's foot or arm or chest. So some of them can be pretty large and intense. I mean, that's huge right there. That's 10 inches across. This is actually a baby skate, so they're kind of adorable. I know this is stingray, but that's actually not true. This is a skate. And this is the mermaid's purse, which is what houses a baby skate. Also in the category of elasmobranchs are sawfish. Um, they're not a skate or a ray. They're kind of in a different um, subcategory, but they are elasmobranchs. These guys have this large snout with teeth on the side. And I know they look crazy. They look like something somebody made up for a, a fantasy or a fiction story. Um, but they do exist. Unfortunately, they're critically endangered. They've been hunted almost to extinction. Uh, the guitar fish is also in this category, so it has a long snout, and then you can see the um, kind of V-shaped pectoral, fin or I'm sorry, dorsal fins on the uh, dorsal side. So the last category we'll just quickly discuss is chimeras. Um, so these guys have an immovable upper jaw. That's what makes them different um, from the sharks and the rays. They also have gills with a flap that covers them called an operculum. And so just a couple of physiological distinctions. Um, in their mouth, they actually have flat plates that crush prey, so they don't actually have teeth. And, oops, I thought I had a picture. I apologize, I thought I had a picture of the chimeras. So I'll have to find you guys one. Um, but anyway, they tend to eat invertebrates and fish. 
So that's it for uh, cartilaginous fish, and next we'll be moving on to the bony fish.